our little story starts today with that structure there. That is actually a German World War II U-boat pen. Hitler said, build me the Atlantic Wall and fortify the whole line from the bottom of France to the top of Scandinavia. And this is a part of that. And we are going to show you exactly what took place here. So inside there, that's where the U-boats were being prepared for their launches against the Allies' ships. So this is where they did all the maintenance and fueled them up, put the torpedoes in, and the crews were working like mad to keep up with the uh, pace of the missions out there in the North Sea. So that is one of the most heavy investments that the Germans did on the Atlantic Wall. And at any given time, there could be from one to like six subs there. But in those subs, there were hundreds of crew members. Also, the Kriegsmarine crew members from other areas around here, they would have to have a place to stay. And that is not here. And that is what today is all about. We are going to have a look at a U-boat lager or a U-boat camp where the, most of the crews for all of the activity of the U-boats were. And uh, it's a pretty fascinating place, little place. So join us. Let's go out and find the pass together right now. So now we're on the road up towards this area, which were actually only for German soldiers. Of course, during the years it's been developed and changed. But what I want to do is to take you out here. We got some photos we're going to share with you. And we're actually going to show you exactly how it used to be and how it is today. So it's a spectacular, large, large area. And most of the structures that you see which looks older, were the barracks for the Kriegsmarine, especially the U-boat personnel. So we're entering the first barrack area here. And let me show you on a photo. Yep, that is exactly the row of these four barracks. And they are in two stories. What is special about this is that the basements are pretty hefty built because they also functioned as shelter, air raid shelters. But you can see today they don't look too different from when they were built here and put there by the Germans for the Germans. And imagine the German soldiers going here back and forth, chatting and having a walk, a stroll, or maybe being transported back and forth to the U-boat pen. Amazing. It's pretty cool to be here, but we're going to go further up and we're going to find several details that we can share with you. Can you see it? What is strange with this picture? There's a bus stop. But right there, that's a mountain cave, which was used as a bomb shelter for hundreds of the crews here it's been completely shot by rocks but it's still there it's in the mountainside and the the purpose was to be able to let as many of the uber crews run into there as possible that one there doesn't look too well but that is also one of the u-boat crew members barracks and they've been converted kind of modernized with new roofing and windows and panels at the base, and very often they also actually put the panels on top of the German main framework. So they are basically just the same as when they were built. So this is basically the layout of the camp. And we are on the north side of the that circle in the middle. I'm standing right at the opening on the northern part of that circle. And that was the Appellplatz. And the Appellplatz looks like this today. This is actually a little playground. But this is the main focus point that collected all the Kriegsmarine soldiers. So when there were fancy visitors, you know, things going on, this Appellplatz here, as you can see there, the round circle, that is right here. So we're going to take a little tour around the area. As you can see, there are tons of newer constructions here. All of these, they were not here at all, especially not on the top there, because on the top there, that is where they had several 
of the um, uh, the hospital was actually over here behind that, that little thing and uh, let me see if I can show you you see the one these three here they used to be right there one of them was actually the hospital they actually had two hospitals so this is basically where that was what Eagle Eyes is looking at now is this building here it's actually a mess hall so this is where the soldiers were fed and it's still standing of course there are near defense positions around this place you have to protect several thousands of your crew members and we are going to find a couple of these structures as well for you to see but now we're going to venture down to the area where the lower ranking uh, kind of um, uh, soldiers were and uh, there are also a couple of uh, bunkers if, and I hope that we can see them and find them. That one also is German, not this part here but that part there and that is this in the picture. So now when we round the corner here each and every building that you see here are German? barracks for the Kriegsmarine crews. So this is basically what you would have walked through. A huge street full of German barracks for the Kriegsmarine crew. That is pretty awesome. This thing here, you can see it's been heavily modified and rebuilt, but it's definitely a Kriegsmarine barrack. And again, you have to use your imagination. You're coming down here and you can see tons of sailors. You know, maybe they're going for a little party. Maybe they're getting ready to go out on a U-boat or a, you know, a frigate or a battleship, who knows. But they were here and this was a protective place. And I'm going to show you something really, really cool now. Can you see straight forward there? Right there. That is actually one of the shelters. So we're going to have a look at that. So it's so many hundreds of uh, <laughs> so many hundreds of uh, crews. You had to be able to protect them. And that's what that is all about. This is a bunker where the crews could be running into and just kind of be safe if there was an air raid. I'm not sure how many it could house, but uh, there was probably room for 50 guys at least in there. So this was the home away from home for Friedrich Wilhelm Frank Thomas. And I feel connected because I served on a submarine and uh, a special feeling to know that you're going to go ashore and you're going to be taken care of because being on a sub is tough work and uh, to get here and kind of have a accommodation like that after 20 days out at sea well you don't smell well and you don't really <laughs> love everybody around you you have to get it off that thing and you have to have some time for yourself but then you can start partying and having a good time <laughs> if you see if you see in the basement there I'm gonna zoom in I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna protrude on anyone's privacy but see how thick that thing is that's because parts of the uh, basement was also a uh, bomb shelter so combination of washrooms and uh, all of that but also you could also run down to the basement and be protected so there is one of the barracks and there you can see how big that thing is someone converted it seems to something I'm not sure whether this is how it looked from the beginning there's a huge gate opening there it actually looks original doesn't it the gate yes. in the bunker looks like it's built huh yes. that is special but that's where they could kind of run into as you saw the other one and they could protect themselves when the allies came in raiding the area so there's a vehicle in the front there so you can see the size of the vehicle compared to that thing and I don't think it goes into the uh, into the, the the rock face itself or the mountain side. It is what you see here. Looks like it could be 
I don't know, six, seven meters wide and uh, you see the thickness of the roof, that's why it's a shelter and that's how it could protect you. But I don't get it, why is there some kind of huge opening there? I'm not sure. It doesn't look like it's been modified, but there could have been huge steel doors as well. It is pretty big actually, it goes all the way back there, can you see that? Actually it's pretty big. And for all I know it can actually go very deep into the mountainside. That would be so fun to figure out or find out more about. Wow. This is the entrance and exit area for the soldiers. And I can't help to imagine Hans and Wilhelm running out from there, screaming like madmen and say, hey, we are going to the town. We're going to have a party. Are you going to join us? <laughs> wow. I don't know. You just have to let your imagination run wild. This structure that you see here is the one in the photo right here. And it's still there. That is pretty cool. This is cool. This is more like what it would have looked like during those days. And you can see here, this is the exit for Thomas, Friedrich and Wilhelm coming out of their U-Bot 852. Who knows? <laughs> Just kidding. Nevertheless, so exciting to walk here. And there is one of those. I was so much looking forward to see if anyone this is more like it, you see that? That's, that doesn't have that huge gate in the front. And that's this one. is, yeah, there's another one over there. You're gonna see that as well. But I doubt that this thing is open. But this is where they would run in. Oh my goodness, nope. Why do you take it downwards? No, no, no. No, you're not gonna take it downwards. It goes upwards like that. Oh, yeah. But you can see, this is the ventilation, heavy duty. How long can it be in there? I don't know, it seems like it could go like 8-10 meters in there. But you can see the thickness of the roof, it's at least, at least 3.5 meters up there. And uh, see how close proximity to the uh, barracks. So if I go over here, what is that crazy structure over there? It's the same one. That is something different. It's not the same roof. Could you see that? So just imagine Hans and Wilhelm. Let's go alarm, alarm, Engländer bombing. Vroom, boom. They just ran in there. Oh dear. That is so cool. Did you know that you can become a World War II History Hunter team member and the artifacts here could be passed on to you? In this manner and fashion here, by creating beautiful World War II dioramas and displays, you can be the future keeper of something very, very special by the history and the history hunting that we share together. Check out the link in the video description, you can click that and you can become a patron team member if you want to. Different kind of perks with For Your Eyes Only videos, travel vlogs, restoration projects, all of that good stuff. And if you want to know more, check out the supporter videos in the beginning of each month. But now let's continue our little adventure. So we are basically all the way down in this area. And you can see the barracks around the Appellplatz. So we have been walking from here, down here, over here. Now we're going to take you up to the higher grounds. We're going to check out the officers' barracks and uh, buildings. And then we're going to find a couple of the features at least one, I hope, of the uh, anti-aircraft gun uh, position that protected the camp. So that's the mess hall for the enlisted or regular types of crews. Now we're going to go up to the top here. This is where the officers' um, mess hall, gambling, casino hall, all of that was there. And there was a huge difference in how they lived when they weren't sure, but on the subs, I can say this of personal experience because I served as a sonar operator on a submarine. So on, in the vessel, in the sub, well, everybody's like, this, everybody's the same, but when you come ashore, oh, a huge difference of where you are. So the crew, regular crew, would do their things, but you know, the uh, officers, they would have something totally different and that is what you're gonna see here. So on the uh, photo, 
we are just about standing here. We're now going up to the officer's mess hall. This is the mess hall for the officers. And the barracks were called Unterkunft, means accommodation. And this one up there, that's the accommodation for the higher ranking officers. But see the difference? You see this very simple little building down there. And this structure, you know, it has this flagpole, has beautiful balconies and staircases, two entrance exits. Totally different world because now you're on the side where the officers were. And this looks derelict as heck, to be honest. But it's amazing to be here. Just imagine when the weather was nice and they had the kind of full control of what could happen and not could happen. Maybe the, the officers sat right out there to eat their meal, huh? And maybe this was a little Appellplatz that the German soldiers would, or officers would stand on. Maybe a higher top ranking officer would come here and they would salute him on this little spot here. Let me show you. It's a pretty big step up from lower down ranking people there to you know, the view and everything. There's so many blue stars here. Let me have that snowball. Let me see. I'm just going to scare him. <laughs> this is our place. <laughs> that was not to be bad with the blue star. Just have some fun. I wouldn't be able to hit it if I want it. <laughs> so I can see some frames there for the um, defenses. So all of this would be fenced in and I can see the fence poles actually laying right there and the fence material for the um, for the fence is actually laying right there. So Leutnant Mestheim was going up these stairs. This time he was very known U-boat captain. Look how they actually made it really nice, but it's also practical because it's not that easy to slide on when it's kind of icy. Beautiful made, it's just like crisscrossing into the concrete to make it look like it's been tiled. It's not, it's just concrete. And you can see here, Eagle Eye is standing guard. What an incredible place. Just wanted to see on the side here what it looks like. Looks to be a very big building. Yeah, this is definitely where they would have sat down and eat a lunch and dinner. Look at that. That area there was most likely used for that. Let's go around this structure and check it out completely. Look at this place here. I'm guessing 100% for sure that this thing could have been kind of overbuilt. Maybe there was even glass uh, framing it in to make it uh, kind of cozy. I do think I actually see another bunker right there. We'll check that out. But you imagine, same with the officers coming back from like two or three weeks of uh, heavy duty fighting and battle situations out there in the rough seas. Of course, it would be so much fun to come here and uh, basically just chill. And I think I could see, yeah, that's the uh, accommodation for the officers. Took the road through the forest here. It just seems like it's populated, so I'm not gonna go into the fenced off boundaries. But that is the, uh, Officers Unterkunft or Barrack. And guess what? It's all the way on the top. And they all just wanted that. They wanted to be on the top. They have the perfect view of this incredible landscape. It also meant that a lot of people had to drive their officers up and down the hill to get them there. <laughs> wow, we've been walking quite a lot today. This is the second location we are kind of looking into. But just want to say something to you. Um, you remember the U-boat pen? That was protected by le not less than 36 20 millimeter anti-aircraft gun. 
uh, in the area. And they've all situated on top of small hills like this. But on that hill over there, there are some massive guns. It's a pain in the butt to get up there, to be honest. <laughs> so we're not gonna show you that today, but we can show you this position here. Two of the other ones I know have been scrapped, but there should be one further down as well. So we'll see if we can find it. Yeah, you can see here on the top, I'm guessing that used to be a uh, munition storage that is closed off as well. Everything is closed off here. People have a phobia of open spaces here. There's one more thing that I've seen more here than bunkers. That is no parking allowed signs freaking everywhere. So the U-boat pen is way over there. The whole U-boat camp is in this valley. Officer barrack or um, yeah, officer accommodation, officer mess, and then all of this, they were not there. So they were kind of built after. But the whole valley here was a huge Kriegsmarine camp, especially for the U-boat crews that really needed these breaks. But here you can see, I'm not 100% sure if it was a 20 millimeter that was here. It looks actually too big for that. So they could have had a uh, Mutsen, a 3.7 centimeter, some kind of anti-aircraft gun. I'm not 100% sure, but you can see the heavy duty circle there of bolts. And in here, that would maybe be a range finder. And down here, that is where you have the uh, yeah, that's correct, Eagle Eyes, munition storage. And if you wonder why I'm kind of <gasps> out of breath, well, I can tell you, gentlemen, so this guy behind me, he is so young. Can you come over here, Eagle Eyes? Can you tell me how many hours did we walk the other day? 13. 13 hours, ladies and gentlemen. So imagine being out here doing this for 13 hours for one day. This gentleman next to me here is one of the toughest little guys I've ever met. With wind, wind. With wind and rain and everything. That is snow. absolutely correct. Snow and hail. So thank you Eagle Eyes for being here. You are absolutely such a trooper. And I can tell you a lot of adults would not have the chance to do what you are doing because this is tough work. And you can see we're almost on the top of the mountain and it goes up and down and up and down. And we pay sometimes 15 to 20,000 pesos every day. So I hope you appreciate that. Give us a little thumbs, a comment and a like because we think we actually deserve it. <laughs> yes, that's the workspace for the German World War II submarine crew members. And just as I loved to come ashore when I was s uh, serving on a submarine, they loved to come to the lager, the U-boat lager, and enjoy the amenities of a barrack, a hot tub, maybe some parties, and just being alive again. To serve in a submarine is very, very special, and it actually takes very special people to do so, and that's what I wanted you to see. I wanted you to see how the German submarine crew stayed in that camp, and I think we did a pretty, pretty good job. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for subscribing, commenting, giving us a thumbs up, a heart, you know, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all of that good stuff. And to all of you Patreon and the PayPal members, thank you for helping us to reach more people. We have tons of more material coming up. This is what we're going to do in this next half year. So I have projects absolutely east, west, north, south. And it's thanks to you that we can go out and do that. These are Kriegsmarine buttons. And I can promise you, Eagle Eyes, he did a absolutely out of this world discovery on this road trip made possible by you and we are most definitely going to share that with you later. This is a Kriegsmarine crew members lighter that I found 
at a Kriegs Marine position and it's coated so it will last a very long time and it has so it's in very very nice conditions but it's actually thanks to you that we can do this so absolutely appreciate that you are with us um, until next time please stay safe keep smiling and remember history is actually everywhere